Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Midwest Prairie Summer Service Co-op for 2021. As our congregations begin planning to reopen in-person gatherings this fall after our long pandemic separation, we take this opportunity for a series of virtual visits with some of our neighboring UU churches over the summer weeks. Each Sunday, you are invited to experience inspirational messages from a variety of our ministers, together with music and other elements that make our communities special. We hope that this morning's service will engage your thoughts and lift your spirits, giving you courage to make a difference in the world and helping to strengthen the connections that sustain us all. Good morning, I'm the Reverend Linda White, and it's my pleasure to be here where so many are gathered today. Today's opening words are by J.E. Abernathy, Jr. Love is our greatest purpose. We affirm that love is our greatest purpose. Accepting one another is the truest form of faithful living. The search for truth is our constant star. We pledge our hearts, minds, and hands to challenge injustice with courage, to find hope in times of fear, and to live out our Unitarian Universalist values every day as a beloved community. Thus do we covenant with each other and with all that is sacred in life. And now could we join together for our opening song, We'll Build a Land. Thank you. 
The chalice lighting is by late UU minister Orlanda Rugnola. Flame, friend of our most ancient ancestors, we kindle you now to make you visible in this time. Yet in truth you burn always in the unique worth of each person, in the imagination in turning of the heart to sorrow or joy, in the call to hope, and in the call to justice. Burn bright before us. Burn bright within us. And I have a little story about the slides that you've been seeing with the chalice. Uh, one of my spiritual practices was to draw mandalas and that is one that I drew and somehow while I was on a sabbatical ministry for the Bloomington Illinois Church someone saw that and took it to a stained glass place and had that made for me um, I just think it's beautiful and I have it hanging in my home and I love looking at it and I hope you do too. I wrote this reading and it's patterned after America, My Country Tis of Thee by Samuel Francis Smith. This country tis of we, those seeking liberty, of we and thee, let us sing. Land where thousands have needlessly died, land that strives to regain its pride. Bring us together, not side versus side, let justice reign and freedom ring. Original peoples, we steal from thee. Let us all more noble be in the spirit of care and love. 
Heed water protectors prophetic will. Speak for creatures whose cries two legged voices still. Restore Mother Earth's crumbling hills. Vanquish the demonizing and virulent ills with science and peace of the dove. Know that black lives matter, please. Must we be brought to our knees? Let us live freedom's song. It is time for all folk to be woke. The world is watching this stroke of decency that shall provoke compassion against travesties perpetuated too long. People of many cultures we let all lifestyles, genders, ability of we and thee let us sing. Let the corral of wisdom be our delight. Let us declare wrong from right. Let truth lead us into light. With one resounding voice, we pray, let freedom ring. At the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, we have a big vision. We aspire to be a loving community, uniting reason with spiritual exploration to transform ourselves and the world. Each week on Sunday, we take up a collection to support the work of our church. If you'd like to consider a contribution today, you can click the donate button in the footer of the website, www.unitarianlincoln.org, or you can give via text giving. Simply text UC Lincoln and the amount to 73256. Hold on. For a little while longer Hold on For a little while longer Hold on For a little while longer Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Fight on for a little while longer. Fight on for a little while longer. Fight on for a little while longer. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. March on for a little while longer. March on for a little while longer. March on for a little while longer. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Sing on for a little while long. Sing on for a little while longer. Sing on for a little while longer. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Everything will be. All right.
What do you think? Can we celebrate the quest for justice, equality, human rights, without determining what we mean by human and deciding if some people are more human than others, or at least more entitled to more rights than others? There are so many areas in which people are not fully valued, and we need to recognize that some institutions in our lives have decided who is not necessarily human enough to be treated with humanity. And those institutional torrents bleed into individual beliefs. I'm going to talk primarily about only two very maligned groups today, Black and Indigenous folk. Though attacks on Asians and transgender people mistreatment of women and children fit into my premise. I will talk a little about some of those groups, but there just isn't time to examine all who suffer from being a semi-subhuman life form in the eyes of others. I'll continue with examination of the Black experience, my heritage, then move on to original nations, Native American experience, also my heritage. But first, let me tell you a little story, a true story. A funny thing happened to me one Friday while I was at the deli counter of my neighborhood grocery store. You will need to imagine how the delicatessen is arranged. The counters are set up in kind of an, an L shape, and on one side, where I was standing, there are desserts, salads, meats, cheeses to be ordered, dished, or sliced. And then about 12 feet away, on the other part of the L, there are fried chickens, fried fish, fried shrimp, fried anything you want. Each side had staff working away. It was quite a busy day, with a slew of, com of customers being helped. I was clearly waiting on the meat and cheese side when the deli counter attendant looked up and said to me, Do you want chicken? The thing I didn't say was if I wanted chicken, I would be on the chicken side of the deli. What makes you think I want chicken? Is it because all black people love them some chicken? Instead, I blinked a couple of times and just said, no. By the way, I've not eaten chicken in more than 25 years, so I'm pretty certain I was not giving off a chicken vibe. Perhaps some would ask what made me think that incident challenged whether or not I was seen as fully human. First of all, let me say that when one uses stereotypical thinking to see people, they know so little of the truth of what that person, those people, really are. That is one way of deciding who is human and who is not, who is other. Have you ever heard or noticed in news stories? When are black people going to stop killing each other? Or why are they looting and destroying their own businesses? We hear that white supremacist question without realizing it is a reframing of the truth. This is subtle because those untruths take the crushing influence of colonial institutions, laws, norms, morals, sanctions, education, and unwritten rules, and frame the problem as a black problem, and we buy into it. It makes black people responsible for resolving the issues created to manage, subvert, castrate, malign, impoverish, and infantilize us. What if, what if those institutions were 
in place to be as fair to black Americans as to white Americans. Access to good education, good health care, fair housing, equality under the law, voting rights, banking, jobs, and positive self-image. Do you think that African Americans would still be quote unquote killing each other or quote unquote committing black on black crime? Here are some of the games played in the humanity lottery. When we say we don't want minorities in our neighborhoods, we don't believe in their human rights or their humanity. People justify blocking certain kinds of social projects from their neighborhoods because they don't want property values to go down. And why do property values go down? Because we have bought into the idea that some people are not as good as we are. You can say, well, that's the way it is, and you would be right. That is the way it is. But what have you, what have we done to change it? Are you willing to fight for people to be viewed as fully human and deserving of all rights and privileges? The ones that most of us take for granted, even if it means you might have to make sacrifices. Obviously, it isn't strictly on the basis of science, the ways we discriminate against each other, because we are almost identical as a species, yet we see human beings being denied their rights on a daily basis. And some of us might agree with the reasons. We don't want Muslims to come to this country because we are afraid of terrorism, while we don't fight the terror as terrorism perpetuated on black, brown, red, yellow, poor people. Black, brown, red, yellow, poor people. Particularly males in this country. We don't want Mexicans coming to our borders except to pick fruit and vegetables we consume at low prices while paying them a pittance and subjecting them to lousy living conditions. It happens because we don't want to pay high prices and we can live with it because Mexican workers are viewed as different from us, distant from us, and that allows us to have less compassion and cheaper food in our bellies. Much of this moment of hatred began with the doctrine of discovery, the papal bull issued by Pope Alexander VI on May 4th. 1493. It proclaims that any land not inhabited by Christians was available to be discovered, claimed, and exploited by Christian rulers. Many indigenous people were murdered to save their souls, and the doctrine is still used today. There's a United Nations site where you'll see the headline, Doctrine of Discovery Used for Centuries to justify seizure of indigenous lands must be repudiated. For, I think, a decade now, um, at gen General Assemblies, we've had discussions about the doctrine of discovery. And a few years ago, um, you used voted to repudiate the doctrine of discovery. I am not aware of any actions we've actually taken as a denomination to push to tear down this immoral institutional policy. Then big bucks industry continues to strip original people, Native Americans, of their sacred lands to, dis to exploit them for profit. We want oil, even if there is a possibility of polluting waterways. As we speak, indigenous people are out there protesting against these imperiled intrusions into the earth. They're not out there because of self-interest, but for all of us. And just like five years ago at Standing Rock, where some were imprisoned 
for our sake. People are going to be going to prison to prison for you and for me again. Will we have a repeat of that at line three? There is and has been for centuries shameful treatment of this nation's original peoples. Many of you have read Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz's shattering book, An Indigenous People's History of the United States. I'm going to read you three quick quotes about genocide from that book. First, U.S. history, as well as inherited indigenous trauma, cannot be understood without dealing with the genocide that the United States committed against indigenous peoples. From the colonial period through the founding of the United States and continuing in the 21st century, this has entailed torture, terror, sexual abuse, massacres, systemic military occupations, removals of indigenous peoples from their ancestral territories, and removals of indigenous children to military-like boarding schools. And next, an example from 1873 is typical, with General William T. Sherman writing, We must act with vindictive earnestness against the Sioux, even to their extermination, men, women, and children. And then finally, in January 1891, L. Frank Baum, famous for writing The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, wrote, The pioneer has before declared that our only safety be depends upon the total extermination of the Indians. Having wronged them for centuries, we had better, in order to protect our civilization, follow it up by one more wrong and wipe these untamed and untamable creatures from the face of the earth. Really? <laughs> really? You exterminate roaches, not people. You tame wild animals, not human beings. At least slaves were valued as three-fifths of a human being, worth something, an investment. But original peoples were meant to be wiped off the face of the earth, actually from their own land. I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, I would say that if there is someone that we don't want to give basic full rights to live, rights to life, liberty, and equality, and equally as important, the pursuit of happiness, then we don't see people as as human as we see ourselves. As women, we are often more likely to believe that men are more capable, make better decisions, and need to have their egos assuaged at our expense. Because of the Me Too movement, more and more of us are able to come forward and claim our right to be free from torture and degrading treatment. I don't know if you agree that having to fend off your boss is a kind of torture, but I think we can mostly agree that if you are afraid to lose your job, if you don't let your boss, mostly a man, most likely a man, touch you or keep you from rising in your company, you have been living in a kind of torment that robs you of self-confidence or higher salary for your family or even your good health because of stress and worry. And it is quite intentional that we have been marginalized and kept down. Sometimes we see ourselves as part of the problem. Women have been viewed as less than for far too long. We are fully human, and we deserve the full rights of respect, trust, and happiness. Expecting that from the men in our lives does not diminish them. It, in fact, 
it gives them a partner that can take some of the stress and worry off their shoulders. If the most important trait known about a person is that they are gay, lesbian, transgender, or bisexual, then we are probably not willing for them to have full human rights. When we say that true marriage is only between a man and a woman, we are saying that some people don't deserve to be treated as human. Now the word love, by some accounts, is used 131 times in the Hebrew scriptures and 179 times in the New Testament. Love is, is a kind of justice. But I don't think saying love the sinner, hate the sin is as gracious as some of us believe it is. Who else do we say that about? Nobody. And we all have sin in our lives. Besides saying that someone exercising their sexual preference and lifestyle choices is sinful, means we are rejecting them as a full human being. Remember when Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? Or when the Beatles sang, all we need is love. And remember Mark 12, 31, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment. Each day of our lives, we must live and act in ways that celebrate the fullness of what it means to be human. If we are to accept fully all people as part of this world's creation, we must examine our hearts and strengthen our minds to be accepting of each human being. We must be intentional in our words and actions. We must know that love can be peace, fairness, and compassion with a little justice thrown in for good measure. May it be so. And now, could you please join in singing the closing song, Building a New Way?
Let us each be beacons of compassion, honor, and love as we meet human beings in this world who are at least as human as we are. And in the words of Nelson Mandela, people must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Man's goodness is a flame that can be hidden but never extinguished. Let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. Let there be work, bread, water, and salt for all. Let each know that for each, the body, the mind, and the soul have been freed to fulfill themselves. May it be so.